Hello, hello everyone. It is Jackie with Pocket of Preschool and I have a new building unit I am want to show you tonight. So my new building, all about building science unit has been uploaded to my TPT store. It's part of the Little Learner Science curriculum. And I just wanna give you guys a quick tour of all the things that are included. So just like with all my other science packs for my Little Learners curriculum, there are um, things to make an amazing science table or science center because we all know the environment is the kiddo's third teacher or second teacher. <laughs> I'm, I'm always on a team, so. Oh, sorry, I almost kicked something over. So I always say it's a third teacher because I feel like in a lot of classrooms there's two teachers. So anyways, so this is my science table and you can tell I had one of my friends. Um, he already built a little bit for us. So I went ahead and left that up to show you guys. But with, just like with the other, all the other units, it has all the same components. So there are these amazing real photographs, um, vocabulary cards, and there are like the different kinds of materials that are used to build. And then there are also some like building vocabulary words like foundation and supports and level and symmetry and balance and gravity and teamwork because we all know you can't build alone. <laughs> Um, and then there is a read aloud and you can print this full page or smaller and there's directions included, but it kind of goes through the steps to build a structure. And then this table is, so right now I have it set up. So if you, if you'd probably be about halfway through the unit. So when I start my units, I actually only have the vocabulary charts up. And then all the anchor charts I build with my kiddos during a small group or during circle, during a read aloud. So here is the parts of a building chart. And this is also a great unit that you can kind of, um, that can kind of sneak over into your block center too. Or you can keep part of these components um, of this unit and you can keep them in your block center too as well. So one of the anchor charts is parts of a building. And again, there's all real photographs. And then you are going to need building materials for this unit. So you have your options. You can use tabletop blocks, um, cups. You can use brick blocks, which are Legos. <laughs> and then unit blocks, um, like the ones like I have in, in my block center, those unit blocks will work. Um, and you can just use um, cardboard. So one of the parts of this unit, oops, sorry, making you guys dizzy is to explore which kinds of materials make the tallest building. So this is our prediction chart and I use Velcro because as scientists we, um, we make predictions and then we change our mind based on the experiences and the experiments we do. So this, oops, sorry guys, sorry about that bump. The prediction chart I put Velcro on so they had a choice of is it, is it bricks, cups, wood blocks, or um, like the unit wood blocks or tabletop unit wood blocks. And then I've just put, um, put them on Velcro. So that way if they change their mind halfway through the unit, they can just easily move their piece as you're doing science talks and things like that. And they're learning and discovering. And you can even talk about and bring this to circle time and um, say, oh, has, has anybody changed their mind? Like what blocks do you think build the tallest building now? So that's the prediction chart. And then as the kiddos are building with all the different kinds of blocks, they need to record their measurements. So that way they can kind of see the results and make comparisons. So this is just a piece of yellow butcher paper. And then I made the graph with just some black tape. And then at the bottom, I have wood blocks. Then again, the, the um, unit wood blocks, cups, and then bricks, those are the ones that I usually use. There are, is, again, there's a couple other options for you as well if you wanna do those. But basically the kiddos build and then they use this string and you can have them doing this in the block center too. And they just measure how tall the building is because as they build more and more with different uh, materials, the different kinds of materials you have, they will be able to visually notice which blocks make the tallest tower and you can kind of talk about that and talk about why you think that is. And I have some things to help you with that as well. So during the unit, you can also do these circle charts on each type of block. And I usually bring this, the blocks with me to circle 
when I make these charts. And basically, you're just talking about the characteristics of, of the block and, and then what kind of they, they're noticing, what um, just all their ideas. So it's a great way to, for them to communicate ideas. So like they say some, some of them are long, some of them are short. Wood blocks are very steady. They're very strong. Talks about the shapes and um, just the characteristics of the block. They're hard. I can build tall things with them. Um, and then here's um, one I made of the cups. So like the kids will say a lot of times they're frustrating to build with because um, they fall down really easy. Um, they crack if you step on them. So kind of they're um, they're light. They're round at the bottom. Things like that. Um, and there are um, circle map sheets you can also use and have your kiddos do. I usually don't do those since I'm preschool, but um, I know a lot of my kinder teachers like using circle maps. So there are circle maps for each kind of block. And I just made a couple examples for you guys. But there is also a brick block, brick block circle map you can do. You can do cardboard and you can do wood blocks. And I put cardboard in there. That way if you have cardboard blocks or maybe you just want to put out just some stacks of cardboard <coughs> and they can um, build with that too. So that's kind of why cardboard is an option. And then also, so you can have the, the science table also set up so they can explore the characteristics of the different building materials. So just put out some blocks in a tray. And this is just a wood tray I had. I think it's from, oh, some, some, some Melissa and Doug. I think it's like a stamp set um, that I had. I love their their how their toys come in nice little trays. But so you can just put the tray of materials out of the different kind of blocks that you're choosing for the kiddos to build with. And then you can put out the science prompts. So this one has science prompts too, just like the other ones. You can, um, they can use the magnifying glass to um, explore and uh, observe and notice the characteristics of the blocks. You also have a weighing challenge so they can weigh the different, the different kinds of blocks and compare them to the cubes. So this is kind of, um, this one they are comparing all the different blocks to the chains and the cubes. And I do have a simpler chart. And these also work great if you're in kinder and you need to do recording pages. Um, those work great too, or I usually just pop it in a packet protector or a, the little page protector guy so they can just write and erase as they go. So there is kind of a simpler one and then there's more a more challenging one. So kind of pick the one that you need to use for your kiddos. And then there's a measuring challenge. So they're measuring with, with cubes, um, all the different, different building materials and they're sorting by short and tall. And then there's building journal pages and discovery pages. And then there's different types of lines for you guys to choose from. So there's two lines. There's a one lined page and then one with a dotted line. And then there is a book list. Um, so if you guys want some great um, books to support your unit, I have some ideas there for you too. And then this is just the Build It Strong Read Aloud that's included. Um, and I just printed it off smaller and the directions are included on how to do that. And you can print off anything in this unit smaller if you have a smaller science center. Just print your stuff off smaller and you'll be good to go. Um, and then there is a parent note you can send home so families can, you can, they can keep that learning going at home. And it says some vocabulary and an act home activity. And then there are blueprint pages. And then this one, my little guy did, he is a pre-K kiddo. He built a skyscraper and then there's also one that um they can name the project and write about it so kind of two different levels and if you have little three-year-olds they're just going to be scribbling and that's okay like scribbles are important and their writing is going to be scribbles and that's just as important too as those fancy um sounding out <laughs> babies that you have so here kind of it is again. So you again, you have the chart and you can use that. You can hang this in the block center if your science center is small. You can put it in the discovery or science center. It's up to you. But that way they can visually see it. And then again, you have some anchor charts. And then I also wanted to show you guys these. So I have different, three different um, label it pictures for this unit. And then there is like kind of like an apartment and a house and a bank. And then they, these are all on Velcro. So they can pull them off and then you can talk about 
the different parts of the building. It's great for building that vocabulary and just for them to notice just the components of a building, what buildings need, um, options they have, and things like that. And I, um, everybody always asks what my books and things are on. This is just one of those little easels from Target, the Target Dollar Spot. I have these blueprints, and the, they're just on a little like sign holder, or you can use a book holder, or sometimes a frame holder. And then I just put like a, a like block behind it to make my, make sure my pages don't curl up. And then once your kiddos get amazing at building, and they've had tons and tons of building experiences. You can talk about building techniques. So just like um, in math and in reading, builders use techniques too. So um, these are some, and I've actually done a lot of these things in my classroom with when I've taught full day for maybe like five, six years, and I've just finally gotten around to actually um, making the unit for you guys. Um, but so these are some of the ones that kiddos would come up with, or I would. So this one is symmetry, which is a great um, way to um, teach kiddos about symmetry and balance. But you can see my little um, pre-K friend built this. Um, and we talked about how it has symmetry, which means it's the same on both sides. So you're sneaking in lots of math. You can also um, talk about how brick layers, they overlap the blocks. You can also do, there's also some basic ones. So if you have younger kiddos, um, just to stack it. There's also tall and long, so they can put some tall, or sorry, some long, and then they put some tall, and they put some long. And then there's blank ones. So if your kids, if you notice kiddos are building a certain way, um, you can have them draw their building technique and have them name it. And then you can hang it on the wall and they can be a building expert. And you can also talk about how, what strategies work really well and how, which ones don't and why they think that like, the stack it, once um, you get your builders building tons and tons and tons, um, they'll say the stack it, the stack it building technique, it's not the best one to use. And you can kind of talk about it. Well, why do you think that is? And um, what have you noticed in your buildings? So yeah, so that's the new building unit, all about buildings. And I'm actually gonna use this next week in my classroom because we're gonna start a construction theme. So it's really perfect for a construction theme. And yeah, so that is the unit. The links are in the top of this post if you want to grab it. Um, and I forgot to tell you about this too. Um, again, there's labels, like I always have labels. <laughs> um, there's different sizes. I'm just keeping my little learner science things in these iris containers from Michaels and putting the building on the um, label on the front. And um, I usually um, can fit two units in here, so I'll probably put building and maybe like another physical science one like ramps or something. And then I just put my teacher pages on a ring. And there are tons and tons of real classroom photographs of the unit in action um, so you, to help you guys out, um, to get you guys kind of thinking. And, um, you know, because sometimes, let's face it, when we're planning, if we just kind of have a picture to kind of get our brains going, then it's like, oh, yeah, I can do this or I have this and I'm going to try this in my classroom. Um, yeah, and so I just put the teacher page on the front, and if there's a recording or a printable on the back, I just, yeah, or if there's a printable with it, I slide it in on the back, just that way I have it. So yeah, lots and lots of good stuff. So I hope you guys enjoy this unit. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments, and I'll go back and answer them. But you guys have a fabulous night. Talk to you soon.